Hey everybody, this is Dan with once again another Git tutorial video. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. I'm actually not going to be in a terminal showing you Git commands. I'm going to be in GIMP showing you some images. And today I'm going to talk about uh, what a Git branch is. And you probably think you know what a Git branch is. And it's probably true that you are wrong about that. Because I was wrong about it for years. And I've only recently come to fully understand what a Git branch is. So I'm going to show you a little demonstration graphically. And uh, I hope you find this useful in your understanding of branches. So here I'm just uh, visualizing uh, a single commit as a dot on the screen. And, you know, when we develop, we end up making more dots. And each one has a parent that it came from. So in this example, we have six linear commits. Um, I'm just showing that graphically. So we'll call this the master branch. That's a default branch for um, Git repositories. And in Git, you almost always create feature branches. And this is a visualization of a feature branch here in green. I call this feature X branch, and it has three commits. So um, here's another example of another feature branch that started at a different commit and it has two commits on the feature Y branch. Um, so, you know, this is starting to kind of look like a tree, right? And these are called branches. It all kind of makes sense uh, when you think about it. So, you know, the root commit is the first commit of the repo. It starts at the bottom. These branches are kind of look like they have colored leaves. And this analogy makes sense. Right? I mean, everybody's sort of taught this, and it makes sense. But I'm going to show you why this is wrong. And it's more than wrong, it's misleading to the user. And I'm going to try to clarify that here in the next few minutes. So, the name branch is misleading because you think about a tree analogy. And the problem is this breaks down really fast and then you get confused on what a branch actually is in Git. So watch this demonstration here. So here's an example where we merged the feature X branch into the master branch. And you know this is what it looks like visually if you uh, if you were to picture it, a new commit is created that is a merge commit. It has two parents, one from the master branch and one from the feature X branch. And here's the exact same merge except on the feature Y branch um, where this is the new merge commit and feature Y was merged into master. It has two parents as well. So have you ever seen a tree that looks like this? Well, Probably not. There's a lot of strange trees that exist in the world. But, you know, th this kind of, you know, you might not think this is a big deal. And that's okay, because this is just sort of the first piece of information that I want to show you. So, here's a little thought experiment that I think is going to be useful. Go ahead and, you know, with your mouse or in your head, circle the branches that are on this screen here. Go ahead. I know you're not actually doing it. Do it. So, you know, you might kind of draw a line and say, well, is this, you know, this is a feature X branch. Maybe the feature Y branch is over here. I, well, I don't know. What about these commits? I mean, maybe it's just these two, and then, you know, the master branch is the center, and the, I don't know about this one. And then I, I, I don't know. You know, you try to draw the branches, and you're like, well, where do they start? Where do they end? I don't really understand. So you're not really alone if you struggled with this. And this is sort of pointing out visually that answering the question, what is a branch, is a little more difficult than you initially thought. Um, and not really. I, I just say that because, you know, you and I and everybody that's learned Git uh, has been misled by the terminology unless you took a 
an awesome Git course where they ingrained the correct terminology into you and what it means. But we sort of have this burning desire as humans to picture a tree in Git. I mean, we use the term tree and the term branch, and it all seems to make sense. We use the term root. Um, so what I want to point out here is stop thinking about a tree. Stop it. Seriously. Stop thinking. You're, you're picturing a tree right now, aren't you? Stop that. So I'm going to go on an aside here about Git tags because it's going to be useful and I promise I will bring it full circle back to branches, so just bear with me. So, if you're unfamiliar with tags, they're an easy way to label a particular commit with a readable name. That's all it is. It's just labeling a commit with a name that you choose. So, if you like commit, say, EE4 5 or EE4 F50E, then you could name it something like, you know, just pick a name, Sweet Commit Bro. And you know, what that might look like visually is just a label attached to a commit. And so, just put that up there, pretty simple. So, if you're new to tags, just real quick, tags will always remain in the repo. And they will always be attached with that commit, no matter how many commits or branches are made. That commit will always stay there, you can always check out to it, it's a great way to label a commit that you're interested in. So, the question you're probably having is, what do tags have to do with branches? And this is the crux of the video right here. I want to describe to you, and think about a git branch, as a git tag that moves. So, with this information, you're thinking about, you know, well, maybe the branch isn't this physical concept of string of commits. If it's just a tag that moves, let's redraw what this graph looks like. So, as you notice, we just moved where we are calling the branch to the tip of each branch. So the master branch should be visualized as the head, the tip of this branch, not the full physical branch. And the same for the feature Y and the feature X branch. So now, the task of circling the branches seems like it's a bit easier, right? Boom! Just circle them. It's a little misleading, right? You're circling one commit. Well, no, you're circling a git branch, which is a git tag that moves. So, if you don't like this, and you feel that it's strange at first, you're not alone. So you may ask the question, well, what about all these other commits? Are they not on the branch? Well, yes and no. Um, and I realize that's a bad answer, so let me elaborate. So all the green commits here were created while the developer was checked out to this feature branch, right? But no, the commits do not exist on a branch like twigs exist on a tree. Git doesn't even need branches to actually work. So humans need the branches to help them track what Git is doing, and Git really just uses the branches to understand sort of what commits are important and which commits a human wants to keep. I hope that makes sense. So you may not be convinced yet of this way of thinking, and... Uh, it's understandable, so let's go ahead and delete a couple of these branches and we'll see what our repo looks like then. Okay, so just backing back up, going forward. <laughs> Did we delete the branches? They're still here, right? No, I deleted them. You don't see the labels anymore, right? So the moving tags, quote unquote, feature X and feature Y are gone now. But the commits that were made on those branches still remain in the repo. So I'm just trying to prove here that, you know, the deletion of the branch itself didn't actually delete any of the commits on that branch. And that would seem strange when you visualize a branch as a physical collection of commits, but it's not at all strange if you visualize a branch as a moving tag. So, 
Just to summarize here, it's more proof that the branch is not comprised of the commits on it. So if you know a little something about Git, you may be thinking, well, yeah, you deleted those branches, so those commits are going to get cleaned up on the next Git garbage collect. And if you're thinking that, you're close, but you're wrong. So remember, we merged the content into the master branch for both of these feature branches, remember? So that means the master branch will forever have the history of these green and orange commits always able to access their state. Those commits certainly appear to now be part of the master branch now, don't they? No! Remember, commits do not belong to a branch ever. A branch is a moving tag, a named pointer to one particular commit at any given time. And, you know, it, it is strange to think about. It took me a few years to really understand this fully. And if you go to the, the official Git SCM documentation, I'm not even kidding. They, it takes 10 pages and 9 images to answer the question, what is a branch? A bit ridiculous, wouldn't you think? And again, Git isn't exactly a simple tool. So, one last thing before I wrap up this video. I want to show you... Um, a couple more implications here. So when you think about branches in this way, all the branch manipulation commands really start to make more sense when you think about a branch being a moving tag. So as an example, let's go ahead and reset this master branch to this commit. And the way we do that would be check out to the master branch and do git reset dash dash hard on uh, two commits back head tilde two. Now when we do this, we reset the master branch's state to two commits back, and that means that the master branch no longer has the merge commits, these two commits here, for the green and orange development lines. Are those commits lost? No. Well, not yet. Anyway, if you think about it that way, they're still in the ref log. You could still do a git log on any of these commits for the green development line, orange development line or the merge commits if you knew the SHA-1 and you'd still be able to access that history even though they aren't tied to any branch right now and so you may recall that commits that aren't tied to a branch get garbage collected eventually by git um, and you can even force a garbage collect by issuing a git gc command although I don't recommend doing that unless you have a good reason to so here's the question to you, the viewer, if you issue to git garbage collect right now, which commits over here would be pruned? Circle. Are you, are you circling them? Pull out that Sharpie and just put it right on the monitor. So, this commit, this commit, and that commit would be pruned in a git garbage collect. And you might be surprised that these two green commits would not be purged. And really that's just because you may have forgotten about the tag. So we created this sweet tag bro at the location of this dangling invisible branch if you will. And it turns out the tags are sufficient references to keep commits around after a garbage collect. So it doesn't have to be on a branch. Of course, you know, having dangling commits that are tagged is kind of a strange use case. So, you know, you, you probably wouldn't want that uh, even though you can do it. So, and just as a reminder, don't do a git garbage collect and you ha unless you have a good reason to. One thing that's great about git is it is super forgiving about mistakes. If you commit, you're basically safe. You can always get back to that state. Even if you delete the branch it was on, you can use the git ref log to get back to it. Um, but if you get in the habit of doing a git garbage collect, all you're doing is saving a little bit of your hard drive space at the cost of potentially screwing yourself over uh, if you make a mistake. So um, that's it for this video guys. I just wanted to really show you kind of what a branch actually is. It's a moving tag and uh, we'll just wrap it up with this summary slide. So I'm making up this new terminology that I really hope doesn't catch on. Get branches are get tags that move. Why don't we just call them get brags? <laughs> Am I right? I'll show myself out. 
So remember that when you commit on a branch, you're actually moving the git branch up by one commit, the moving tag, the git brag. And when you merge another branch into your git branch, you create a merge commit, and you move the git brag up by one commit. So you're moving the branch, right? When you reset a branch to an older state, like we did here in this example, you're moving the git branch backward in history. And when you create a new branch, you uh, created basically a new moving tag at, that starts at that state. So to summarize, a git branch is a moving tag. That's it and that's all. I hope this was helpful. I'll see you guys next time.